before I get started, just a quick note, I've just upgraded the firmware on the A7S 3 so this is shooting in s -Cinetone for the first time, which should make it easier to color match the S3 to the FX6. Like and subscribe if you'd like to see more videos shot in s on the channel, or if you don't care. Thanks. Welcome back to my pop-up studio in the pub. I've had the FX6 for a few weeks now, and last week I used it for the first time on a commercial job, which was exciting and, I'll admit, a bit daunting. They say never rush into using a new camera on a paid job, but what was I going to do? Leave it at home? Obviously not. At one point I wasn't able to find some autofocus settings that I needed, but I was just able to use manual focus instead, so it was fine. And then I looked them up when I was home, and no one on location was any the wiser. Since the end of 2020, I've been using the Sony a7S III for my work, and the FX6 shares a lot of the same internals as that camera. But this is one of those instances where it's not so much what's inside that counts, but what's on the outside. The FX6 is a focused and uncompromising video tool in a way that a mirrorless camera just can't be. Now there are downsides to that sort of single purposeness, but if you work in a video production environment they're very few and far between. That said, the downsides do mean that I won't be getting rid of the A7S III anytime soon. For me, where the FX6 has impressed the most is in terms of its ergonomics and usability. Yes, the menus are a lot trickier to navigate than on Sony's Alpha range, but using a tool that's designed from the ground up to fit a video production workflow has really freed me up to focus on the art of shooting video. One of the headline features that lets me do just that is the built-in ND filter. It's a game changer if you're coming to this camera from a mirrorless. It makes getting and keeping the exposure dead on super easy. Another thing that I really love about this camera, people tend to overlook, is its battery. Coming from the A7S III, I have pretty bad range anxiety when it comes to power. But slipping in a BPU60 to the FX6 I've actually got range arrogance. You get over 300 minutes of operation time, which for me that's a, a whole afternoon shooting. I can now leave the camera on for pretty much the duration of a shoot and not have to worry about it running out of power. The FX6 is actually quite a big camera and it has just the right amount of heft to it. It's light enough that I can carry around all day if I need to, but it's got enough mass to smooth out and stabilize those handheld jitters and make very organic, natural looking video. There are lots of ways you can rig an S3 up to tick most of the same boxes that the FX6 does. Their similarities on the inside means you can get the same stellar footage from both cameras, but there's just something about having that Cine DNA that makes the FX6 a uniquely powerful creative tool, straight out of the blocks, in a way that a mirrorless simply isn't. I do wish it were possible to have the IBIS of a mirrorless camera, however. In summary, I really like this camera. It makes my job, where I'm a kind of a one-man band on a production, a lot easier and I can't wait to spend more time shooting with it. Anyway, thank you for watching. Like I said at the top, if you'd like to subscribe to this channel, that would be excellent for me, I think. And if you've got any questions about this camera or the A7S III, you can put them in the comments and I will do my best to answer them. I'll probably have to Google them and then answer them. But, you know, whatever, that'll be fine. Right, it's getting late. I'm out of here. Bye.